2020 Be the Change Breakfast. My name's Ahmad Thomas. Can folks hear, hear me and see me now? Let me try that again. Yes, I can hear you and see you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. To, to, it couldn't be more 2020 than that. So I'll, I'll keep rolling now with video so, so you can see me like I see all of you. Uh, my name is Ahmad Thomas. I'm the CEO of the Silicon Valley Leadership Group, a proud board member here at HealthRight 360, and your Be the Change Breakfast host this morning. I'd like to again thank all of you for being here with us as we come together to celebrate our healthcare heroes and partners. This year has been a year like no other, and as HealthRight 360 continues to see an influx of patients coming for help and treatment in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, we would like to pause this morning to say thank you. Our healthcare workers are essential to the health and safety of our community, and HealthRight 360's mission and soul is carried forward through their work on the front lines, caring for those individuals who turn to us in need. I also want to add a special thank you, a very special thank you, to Kaiser Permanente, Sutter Health CPMC, and Twitter, who are this morning's presenting sponsors. And thank you to all of you who have joined us today. We cannot do our important work without your support and generosity. I want to get us started by sharing the heart of HealthRight 360 our healthcare workers on the front lines. They are so dedicated. They're willing to go wherever is needed to serve our clients. So we're now going to spotlight a few of our workers in this video. They exemplify the dedication and service throughout our staff that has enabled HealthRight 360 to provide high quality care for over 53 years and now through a global pandemic. This has been a year, I mean, you hear this all the time, a year like no other. COVID-19 did not end substance use disorder. It didn't end mental illness. It certainly didn't end a lack of affordable housing for people. It didn't end incarcerating people. So all of the things that we're here to address, those issues, they continued. And in fact, in some cases got worse. In this period of time since COVID, there have been a dramatic increase in calls to crisis lines across the country, increases in alcohol use, domestic violence, suicide attempts and suicides. In San Francisco, more people have died of a drug overdose than have died of COVID-19. I've learned that a lot of them, you know, were, were taught either bullied in school or neglected at home or there was abuse in the home and they were told they were never amount to anything and they grew up believing that. You know, then the pandemic not letting them socialize, they went right back, slowly, slowly sliding right back into that dark little hole of being isolated. We've had um, clients who family members passed and they could not go to the funeral. It was their child's birthday party and they hadn't seen their child in like six, seven months. And they couldn't go. I've, I've observed that even the toughest guy shed a tear. It builds up a lot of anger, like to try to be a tough guy. You're no less of a man by expressing the way you feel, and, and it's okay to show emotions. A lot of men who are clients have grown up without that male figure, or the male figures that they've had in their life may have been uh, abusive to them. Or You try to walk alongside with everybody, eventually you're trying to help prepare people to be able to walk through the doorway on their own. Man, our staff were heroes. I mean, they were really, really heroes. For example, our dental team. And so we needed people to be working in some of our residential facilities that are 24-7. That So they're like, we'll go do whatever you need us to do. In residential, you know, you're kind of at in their home. Go in, and it has a very intimate, you know, relationship being, you know, and Dennis, you know, I'm like right there on your face. I get it. 
Almost everyone I meet is like terrified of the dentist. But now that they know, like not only me, but the other dental staff who are also re redeployed, I think relieved a lot of that anxiety. A lot of people just want to be seen, just want to be heard. And then, so, so a lot of times our appointments turn into therapy sessions. A little engine that could that we are, we're in competition for PPE in the same way with big hospital systems and public health systems. We had an amazing amount of donations of hand sewn masks. The opera, San Francisco Opera, their, um, their um, costumers made these amazing masks. I was like, oh, they're really good at sewing. <laughs> yeah, we got new filters in. Um, we got a new HVAC system to kind of filter out all the aerosols that we generate. We've created um, quarantine protocols for clients and testing protocols. And they need to understand we're not being mean to them, telling them that they need to wear their masks, that they need to be six feet apart. We haven't had a family house meeting since the pandemic started. I've been in recovery 19 years, and I let them know that. You know, it took a lot of healing. It took a lot of work. I can tell you that recovery and sobriety is trauma because everything that you've been hiding and running from is now what you have to deal with. My best friend getting shot and killed. That was a 2005. Um, it just was. To me, it was more than what I could, what I felt I could take at that point. I used every excuse in the book to get high. So, what's more important: being selfish and doing what, continue doing what you're doing, or being able to give your children that honest childhood. And I chose, I chose to want to be around for them, so it, it was the best decision I felt that I made. And then being able to get an opportunity to work for this place, to give back. Yeah, I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. They're looking for acceptance and um, forgiveness, really. I, I'm coming from a place Instead of complaining about the change that needs to be, be the change. Help, be the change. Because that's, that's the only way change can happen. You can't just leave it for the next person. You have to help be a part of that. So there's always hope, always. That's why we're here. That's why you all dialed in. Vitka, that, that essential shirt you had on in the video tells the whole story. Health Right 360 and the services they provide, uh, their, their workers, the, the care, uh, the love, it's needed now more than ever. And that video showcases why I feel so fortunate to be involved with Health Right 360. Uh, to briefly tell my story in association, I, I came to Health Right as an investment banker, actually. A strange way to make the connection. Uh, but we work together at uh, Barclays. I see uh, several of my colleagues uh, who join and support Health Right, uh, Tom Christian, a former board member, uh, all of us working together to issue the first ever social bond for a nonprofit uh, ever in the US or, or um, ever in the municipal market. An extremely successful transaction that won several awards. And Health Right 360 has also won awards uh, by the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce as one of the three most significant nonprofit organizations of 2020. So beyond everything that we see there on the screen and the impact in the community, this is an amazing and extremely well-run organization that I'm just so proud to, to play a very small role in helping. And I'm proud of my association with our family of programs. Uh, Walden House, Haight-Ashbury Free Clinics, including mobile health care services, Asian American Recovery Services, Women's Recovery Association, North County Serenity House, Rock Medicine, Lion Martin Health Services, Prototypes, and Women's Community Clinic. I've seen firsthand the healing work, the miracles of redemption and resilience, and the lives that have been forever changed for the better. 
And now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the leader of our organization, an incredible leader that we're so fortunate to have, President and Chief Executive Officer, Vitka Eisen. Thank you so much, Ahmad. Thank you everybody for being here this morning, this early morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm so sorry that this is not in person, but uh, I guess you can't beat the commute. Um, how many times have you heard that joke? Um, uh, so, you know, as, as Ahmad said, this is not a normal year. In a normal year, we'd all be sitting together in a large ballroom, brightly lit by the morning sun. While you sipped your coffee, I would tell you about the amazing work of Health Right 360. I would touch on our founding over 50 years ago as Haight-Ashbury Free Clinics in Walden House and our continuous and uninterrupted commitment to providing compassionate and evidence-based addiction treatment, mental health care, primary medical services, dental care, transitional housing to people who are challenged by poverty, a lack of housing or shelter of any kind, and a history of incarceration. I would tell you about the thousands of people we had helped on their road to healing. And all of those things would be true and they still are true, but this is not a normal year. In a normal year, I would share stories of our clients bravely facing and overcoming obstacles on their path towards health, towards becoming the mother or father or daughter, son or neighbor that they had hoped that they could be. And those stories would be real and they still are today, but this is not a normal year. This year, our communities, our clients, our staff, our volunteers, our neighbors, our friends and family members faced a cascading series of extraordinary challenges. A novel, highly contagious pandemic virus, rapid school and childcare shutdowns, emergency shelter in place orders, again, a dire shortage of PPE or personal protective equipment, economic slowdown, followed by massive unemployment, broad social upheaval, in response to the murders of black people by police and through it all health right 360 continued to make good on our mission we never ceased providing services to the people who need us and by we i mean our amazing staff now i know i said this before but i want you to know that the staff of health right 360 are freaking heroes most of our services require face-to-face -face contact with people who are unable to shelter safely because that either have no home or they're coming from jails or prisons, petri dishes for infectious disease. Working from home is simply not an option for many of our staff. Now COVID-19 is still a scary and potentially lethal virus and it was ever more so in March when we knew even less about it. Our staff put on a brave face behind homemade masks and bandanas and a limited supply of surgical masks in the early months when we could not source sufficient PPE to keep up with the need and they continue to show up for our clients because our clients need us. In a meeting uh, in one of our facilities during the half, latter half of March in one of our residential programs, a client asked me, what are you gonna do when it all falls apart out there? When the city falls apart and people are ripping it up and running wild, are you gonna turn us out? He had anxiety about a real dystopian turn of events. Never, I said. See, that was the level of their anxiety made more potent by lifetimes of rejection and abandonment. From there, the meeting quickly moved into staff and clients together, making plans for cleaning and sanitizing the facility, for proper social distancing and marking chairs and spots off in the facility, for doing laundry, and for encouraging mask wearing. I'd be lying if I said it was easy. Our staff were frightened. They were worried about their own health and their families but they did and they still continue to do what needs to be done. The amount of drive and perseverance it took, the creativity to be able to find ways to engage children and families in therapy online, to brainstorm all of the challenges for telehealth and secure headphones for client privacy, to establish safe quarantine protocols and make sure our patients had food and could get their medications, and to make sure we kept staff and clients constantly informed of the latest information to source PPE from China, build plastic barriers. It was a monumental team effort. Now, as Ahmad already mentioned, we wouldn't be as strong during this pandemic without the caring and compassion of our healthcare partners. Not only did we receive increased funding from grants and donations, but many, many of you stepped forward to provide much needed PPE, from hand sanitizers to face shields to hand-sewn masks. We would like to thank all of the individuals, volunteer groups, 
community organizations and businesses that have donated to support Healthlight 360. The first in-kind donor we want to spotlight is our largest donor of PPE, Salesforce. Trucks laden with PPE showed up at our clinic doors at 1563 Mission. I cannot tell you what a welcome sight that was. These came at a time when we were scrambling desperately to shore up our supplies, and we are so very grateful to Salesforce that we were included as a grateful recipient. Here to represent Salesforce is Aline Schneiderwin. She led the charge on the PPE initiative as it, and is Senior Vice President of Strategic Partnerships at Salesforce. Thank you, Vidka. I uh, first just want to say I'm so honored to be here today and uh, grateful that we played a little role in all of this. Um, I think I'll start out by answering the question that we first get when we're talking about what we did here, which is in what universe is a tech company getting involved in sourcing PPE. And so I think I'll start by telling you where it started. Uh, it came, it started with a phone call from the chancellor of UCSF, Sam Hallgood. Uh, he called our CEO, Mark Benioff, and he's, it was in those early days, uh, probably late February. And he said, Mark, this pandemic is coming and we're realizing we don't have enough PPE and our normal means of getting it aren't going to work anymore because it's all it, it was just such a frenzy it was all going away can you help and of course mark said what is ppe like we had no idea what this was we'd never even heard of it um so of course also mark said yes you know whatever you need and and i think i'll start again like the question is why would a hospital call a tech company well for us we have relationships and by day, in my real life, I lead our strategic partnerships with other technology companies. And one of those companies is a company called Alibaba, based in China, who has tremendous relationships across the region. But in those early days, there were all these businesses pivoting because they saw this opportunity and this need. And so all these manufacturers or factories that made clothing were turning their business into business models to to create PPE. So again, part of it was like going and finding these these uh, partners, but also can we trust them? Because that was like part of this, you know, early days. Anyway, through much uh, work, uh, research, uh, relationships, and again, you had to move quickly because at that time things were things were kind of evaporating from these factories. The Chinese government were changing the regulations every day, so the early days were very. I'd call it call it wild, wild west, but. We started to get our rhythm. We started to find the PPE. We worked in partnership with UCSF uh, to, to, to source it. And then the next, the next hurdle became uh, shipping and logistics. Because again, at that time, everyone was going after this PPE. So our team had to dive in and again, further relationships with companies like Uber Freight and FedEx. Uh, you know, started to find ways to get it here. And, and when the planes filled up, we had to pivot and move on to cargo ships, which again, in, in our day jobs, none of us know any of these th anything about any of these things. Um, but it started to work. We started to see the momentum. I was telling Vitka's story. I live in Marin County. And one morning, we, we, ha we started to get very savvy with these uh, cargo ship tracking apps. And I had it on my phone. And I could see that the ship that our PPE was on was coming through, uh, coming up from LA through under the Golden Gate Bridge. So I got up early and I set my time lapse out there to capture the ship coming in. But um, I'll just say it, it started working. We started to receive it. Of course, it, you know, getting it to UCSF. But UCSF, that was part of the arrangement. Of course, they had their needs, but they knew the community had their needs. And they did an incredible job of reaching out to partners everywhere. And at the end of the day, we were able to source 60 million units of PPE. We also supported six different countries because, again, this was happening all over and we had these other constituents we felt responsible for, 31 different states, and to date, over 600 different organizations. And that includes nonprofits, nursing homes, schools, um, again, parts of the, uh, rural communities that just didn't have access to it. And again, I, I turn it back to, you know, we helped get the PPE, but really it was the partnership with UCSF and, and uh, their generosity. So again, grateful to be here today, grateful to share that story. Um, and to just play a part of, of the journey. Thank you so much, Aline and Salesforce for your generosity. I love the story of watching the ship come in. That's how we felt when we saw the truck come. <laughs> when we saw the truck come with the PPE. PPE is consumable, you go through lots of it. So uh, it was such a huge need. We look forward to our 
uh, working together and serving our community for years to come. Now for mothers, not only did we receive PPE donations, but we have been and continue to be the recipients of many, many beautiful handmade masks that are gratefully welcomed and accepted by our staff. When they're not taking care of their patients, they're happy to wear a mask in the, in, in the office made with love and care of the community. Representing one of the fabulous <coughs> makers of hand-sewn masks is customer Galen Till from the San Francisco Opera. These luxurious haute couture masks are a must wear fashion for 2020. And they make us want to sing, but you, you, you don't want me to sing for sure. Um, so here's the opera. Hello, my name is Galen Till and I'm a costume supervisor with the San Francisco Opera. The pandemic affected the costume shop very suddenly. One day we were preparing for our summer season and the next we began what became a months long quarantine. As our jobs really don't translate well to home work, we started to think about what we could do to help the frontline workers. And especially as PPE became more and more scarce, we realized that we were in a unique position to engineer and manufacture PPE that was not only well made, but could be made in mass quantity. Um, so we started pulling together fabrics from previous shows, previous operas, and we started to create these mask kits that we then delivered to our crew spread out throughout the Bay Area. And every week we would pick up the completed masks and drop off a new kit. And this, we did this for weeks and weeks and weeks on end throughout the entire quarantine. And it actually not only helped us to continue our sense of community within the shop, but it also allowed us to really feel like we are connected to our community at, at large as well, especially during such a strange time. And I really want to stress that every single mask that we made was made with so much appreciation for the doctors and nurses and everyone out there on the front lines at Health Right 360 and beyond. Thank you so, so much for everything that you do, being able to help even in a small way during such an, an unprecedented time is an absolute honor. Beautiful. So here, I just wanted to show you one of the masks they made. They're just, the idea that this was going to be or was once a costume in an opera was just super exciting to me and they're beautifully made. So thank you, Galen, and thank you to the entire costume department and artisans for the masks. Thank you, Vitka. Yeah, I haven't even started asking for money, and I've got the list here with folks already uh, already making texts and sending money. Kumar Sankara, $100. Rachel Singh, $1,000. Jivan Nandasakan, $100. Keep it coming. I, when I ask, maybe you're really going to blow, blow up my phone in the list. But... Uh, Again, thank you, Vitka, and we've heard today from those in the community who are helping us to uh, positively, positively transform lives with their work. It's, it's just incredible stuff. And that's why I'm speaking to all of you today and asking you to help HealthRight360 continue the vital, life-saving work as we've done for over 50 years. Together, we can give hope, build health, and truly change lives. Now you're probably online right now because a friend or a colleague invited you or because you're already familiar with our organization. But now that you have met some of our inspiring people, it's my privilege to ask you to make a financial investment in our ongoing success. When you give today, your gift will be put to immediate work, helping those in need during these challenging times. Please text your pledge now by texting CHANGE 707070. That's CHANGE 707070. Today, your gift to our fund in need at the level of $25,000 helps support the clients who turn to HealthRight360 for help. Thank you very much again to Twitter. Sutter Health CPMC, 
and Kaiser Permanente for giving at this level. We know that many of you are part of a corporation or a foundation, or maybe you're in a position to give at this level as an individual. COVID-19 has not diminished ongoing needs for the population we serve. If you would like to join at this level, please text your gift and we will see it up on the screen. The next gift level is for $10,000. Your gift is an investment towards ensuring the people of San Francisco will always have a place to call their health home where they can access the medical treatment, mental health services, and substance use disorder treatment they need. This morning, we thank Daniel Binder, a fellow board member, thanks so much, Daniel, uh, Peter and Cynthia Sullivan, and an anonymous donor for their kindness. If you wish to join with these very generous members of our community, please text CHANGE to 707070. I wanna highlight one of our amazing frontline workers, Keith Roten. If you were to walk into HealthRight 360's clinics to get healthcare at 1563 Mission Street in San Francisco, He's one of the team who would welcome you, take your temperature, and help you figure out where to go to get the care you need in our building. Here is his experience. Working in a pandemic has been an impressive difficulty trying to correlate our understandings through the Pentecostal confusion in close proximity of people who don't really comprehend what we're truly dealing with. That's one thing that can be taken away. The worst thing about COVID or this whole pandemic is the fact that people don't believe that it's real. That's the hard thing. Well, what makes me proud of being an essential worker is the feeling that I'm giving back. You know, it's, uh, I like being a small part of a great whole. I feel like I'm supposed to be where I am, where I am as a frontline worker. Living with, that, with a frustrated person who's been to numerous places where they're closing doors and are getting turned away because they're feeling like well, they, they're not being understood or heard because of this whole pandemic thing. And then coming to the only place that's available to them with all this, carrying all this frustration. You can imagine how that could be for us. Be able to show in my behavior that I'm handling it, I got it all under control, even though inside it's going, it's a storm going on, I'm going crazy, you know, dealing with it, you know, because I, I have my own things that I have to deal with too. But it's not about me, it's about the client. He is the first person I see just about every morning and his, uh, you know, he's so welcoming, not just to staff, but to everybody who walks through the front doors and some people come in in very de desperate and dire circumstances. Every gift of any amount you may give us is so very welcome and much needed. Please do text in your gifts when you feel so moved. When you support Health Right 360, know that you are supporting an organization that serves Majority of people of color and our staff demographically match our client community. Many of our staff have lived experience. Former drug users now in recovery, formerly incarcerated, now dedicated to a life of service. In fact, many of our staff are former clients of our programs, me included. We are living examples of hope and redemption and the wisdom of investing in the health of our communities. As an organization, HealthRight 360 stands at the intersection of some of our most pressing and complex social issues before, during, and beyond COVID-19. As the needs of the most vulnerable people in San Francisco have evolved, it was to HealthRight 360 and our dedicated staff that this city turned to partner in providing healthcare services to people experiencing homelessness, temporarily sheltered in hotels during the pandemic. It was to our team that San Francisco looked to operate isolation and quarantine hotels for people who were marginally housed and had tested positive for COVID-19. And as San Francisco looked for alternatives to calling the police in response to individuals in mental health distress, a call that has too often ended in, tra in tragedy, our staff joined the new street crisis response team 
forging a new, safer, and less coercive path to street safety. So if in the face of so many issues and challenges in our communities, you wonder, what can I do? How can I make a difference? Please consider supporting Health Right 360. Again, you can text CHANGE to 707070. And now back to the heart of Health Right 360, our healthcare workers on the front line. They are so dedicated. They're willing to help however needed in order to serve the clients. Here's Johnny to share more. One of the biggest things working uh, through the pandemic has been uh, the different capacities that I've taken on, that I've been called on to fill. Uh, I've been called on to, uh, to drive late at night when some of our uh, clients during our, our first shelter in place, some of our clients were working late at night and they didn't have a, a ride home back from work. As we were driving home, one of the clients said, uh, had mentioned to me how, how desolate and lonely the streets look. She actually said it looked like something out of a scene of uh, The Walking Dead. And, you know, that struck me because her next word was, was I feel safe. You know, and it, 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 it touched something within me that I can't put it, fully put into words of how essential of a service I was providing for her to, I can't describe it, the feeling that I get from being able to help our clients at this time of need. Wow. The healthcare workers at HealthRight 360 are, are incredible. And shout out to, to Keith and Johnny for, for all the work that you do. Uh, let me shout out some of the donations coming in. I know we got some deep pockets out there. I'm not going to put pressure on folks to, to, uh, to give, but please, please do give. I see several board members who I'll call out here who have, uh, who have committed. My check is already cleared uh, from myself and my wife to support this uh, amazing organization. Uh, huge thank you, Rachel, uh, Richard Calderon, $5,000, Charles, Charles Siegel, $1,200, Karen Pointer, uh, Diane Ireland, two of our board members at uh, 500, 400, Anna Navarro, Ashani Sundrum, Mithli Severum, uh, all at $100, Carolina Hansen. Uh, let's keep it coming. Let's keep it coming, guys. And this, this is so powerful. And I just love hearing the stories of the care and service HealthRight360 staff to uh, provide to the most vulnerable. And anyone who has been to San Francisco or you see so many of our communities in the Bay Area uh, just getting ravaged by this pandemic, you know how vital these services are, especially for homeless and those most in need in our communities. Uh, I'd like to take this moment now to honor all our healthcare heroes. Those of you joining this call that are on the front lines providing care during the pandemic, please raise your hand so we can honor you. I won't tell you stand up in the Zoom setting, you're good on top, you don't know what's going on below, but please raise your hand so we can honor you. And much like we've seen in communities across the country, uh, by banging pots and pans to pay tribute to those on the front lines working in hospitals. I'd like you all to take your Be The Change mug or a, a pot, a pan, uh, whatever you've got handy. We're going to do our mugs live. Turn yourself on video. Unmute yourself. Unmuted. And let's make some noise for our healthcare heroes out there. All right. Yeah. That's actually not bad. That's not bad at uh, 8, 840 this morning on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Oops. Thank you all. Uh, that, that was great. Uh, thank you very much for all of you who have been giving. Uh, I'm humbled by your caring and compassion for this work that we do, the incredibly important work that HealthRight360 does. When you contribute to HealthRight360, it's truly an investment in your own future, in our communities, 
And I believe that it is one of the most important investments that any of us can make. We help people change from being the beneficiary of taxpayer funds to contributing tax revenue to our communities that help everyone. Let's help to get people the care they need into treatment, stably housed, and into jobs they want. Let's help everyone get better, do better, be better. Please text CHANGE to 707070. That's CHANGE 707070. I got some more names for shout outs here. Alex and Ingrid Paulson, $2,500. Thank you so much. And Ann Conley, uh, Patricia McManus, both at $250. Thank you. The generosity is just uh, incredible. We're grateful. It's a gift and a blessing. Thank you all. There are thousands of men, women, and families in the Bay Area who need the support of a healing, welcoming, therapeutic community in their lives in order to reach their full potential. And in case you do not know our reach and impact. Last year, HealthRight 360 provided healthcare to over 40,000 individuals statewide and to over 11,000 in San Francisco alone. If you have been inspired by what you've seen today, like Dean Petrovsky, $250, Catherine Reed, 100 bucks, Shelly Wong, 50, Heidi Smith, uh, Iona Miller, all the names that are popping up on my screen here. If you're inspired like all of us are, uh, please consider joining us this morning as a supporter. HealthRight 360 has over 50 years, five decades of experience. A leader here in our community, a leader in the nation, helping people heal and reach their potential. This isn't a startup organization. We've been around since the summer of love, making the difference in people's lives and in the lives of their families. Here's Olga Ayala to share her frontline experience. Working through the pandemic has honestly been um, a mixed bag of emotions. Um, at first, in the very beginning stages in early March, April, when many of us didn't really understand what was going on, um, I, fe I felt fear, fear of the unknown, and I felt worry. As we have moved along during the pandemic, I felt um, that our team here at the clinic, our team of providers, our medical support staff, our leadership team, we have all worked very hard toward providing a very safe space for our patients and clients. And I'm so grateful that we were resilient enough to continue uh, to keep the, the clinic open and to continue providing medical services and behavioral health services to our patients. On a personal level, I, I, I miss my family. I have a lot of family on the East Coast and I have not been able to travel to see them, uh, especially my daughter. So that's been really tough. Thank you, Olga. As you have heard, our frontline staff are sacrificing so much of themselves to take care of those in need of healthcare. Right now with the pandemic surging like we haven't seen before, we are desperately sourcing much needed funds and donations. Uh, donations of PPE, especially N95 masks and nitrile gloves in medium, large and extra large sizes. We're also raising funds to purchase HEPA filters in order to improve the filtration in all of our facilities. Your gifts of support, whether it's PPE, that we heard from Salesforce and Aline, their incredible efforts to support HealthRight 360 in the Bay Area, or whether you can provide funds, it's all very, very welcome. 
I go back to the list here of names coming in. Christina Hewn, a former uh, Barclays colleague, one of our leaders here in the social bond space, an innovator in finance in the Bay Area in California, a $500 contribution. Thank you, Christina. Alden Smith, I don't know if that's our NFL. Alden Smith, former 49er, Raider, played for the Cowboys. If it's you, Alden, keep kicking tail out there on the field. And if it's not, uh, it's up. I'm sorry. It's up. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sorry, but, uh, but thank you, Alden Smith, regardless. Uh, when you consider a gift of $5,000, you allow us to reunify a family in recovery, provide safe and sober housing, and provide much needed parenting classes and support. Today in our video, you heard from frontline workers whose own lives and the lives of their families were changed through residential substance use disorder treatment and mental health services, and are now giving back to our community through the essential work they provide at HealthRight 360. Thank you very much to Denise and Ed Miller, Jim and Suzanne McElwee, uh, Jim, one of our board members, thank you, Jim, shout out to Jim, and Burnham Benefits for your support at this level. Please join them by texting CHANGE to 707070. Coming in hot here, Rachel Singh, another $1,000. Thank you, Rachel. Let's go to the $2,500 level and hang tight. Don't worry if $2,500 doesn't work, we've got a level for you. So, so sit tight and, and listen, just a couple more to hit on here and thank you all so much for your support. And your support at the $2,500 level is an essential part of the San Francisco Street crisis response team. This new project allows HealthRight 360, working with the city, to reduce law enforcement response to mental health, nonviolent street activity, and gets people, most of whom are experiencing homelessness and addiction and mental health crises, the help and care that they need. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. And as you see in our communities on the streets of San Francisco, this investment is sorely needed today, supporting the incredible work of HealthRight 360 and our essential workers. A gift of $1,000 is $83 per month, $83 per month, and ensures low-income, vulnerable women who turn to us for their reproductive health care, receive the medical and therapeutic services they need. And I won't go into the ways $83 per month can be couched and cut up. We probably have different hidden fees and services we're signed up for that we don't even know we're signed up for that add up to $83 a month. You knock that out, roll it into a contribution here. It can make a really, really big difference couple more levels here, $500 and $100. A gift of $500 or $100, uh, both of those levels are welcome and needed. Please text now to say yes to ensuring that healthcare is a right, not a privilege. Joan Isal, $100, thank you. Just got the contribution in. We know and respect that you may prefer to give at a different level and we ask you to text the amount you would like to change 707070. We truly appreciate all support and believe that every gift is a gratefully received blessing. And we thank you for your gift today. I got big news, big news here. I'm delighted to announce that we have received a $100,000 anonymous gift. Wow, let me take a look and see what we've got here on the screen. I think that that takes us to $245,000 uh, in terms of the sponsorship money that's come in. But to, to anonymous, if you're out there anonymous, man or, or woman, uh, shout out to you. Uh, thank you for that very, very generous $100,000 gift. Now that, that's, that's a big check. 
you know, for, for those of you who can do that, that is, that is wonderful and deeply appreciated. If you can't, uh, anything you can give is helpful and appreciated. Edward Miller, $5,000. Thank you very much, Edward. Uh, anonymous for 200. Thank you, uh, Anonymous. We sincerely thank each and every one of you on behalf of the courageous clients that we serve. And Vika, I'm not sure if, if you're able to see it on your screen, what we've got now is our, our total live number, but that $245,000 on the partnership side, combined with the money we're raising today, is hugely important to help our communities, help those in need, and help HealthRight360. Looks Thanks. like we have, we have close to $20,000 that came in since you started talking. Incredible. So good job, people. Good job, Ahmad. Thank you. Thank you. We sincerely thank each and every one of you on behalf of these courageous clients we serve. And we thank all of you for the most important gift you gave this morning, the gift of your valuable time. We truly appreciate that you took time out of your very busy lives to be here this morning to learn more about HealthRight360, to learn more about how you can contribute and give back to your community, and to learn more about how you can help. We could not do this important work without the partnership we have with all of you. On behalf of our healthcare heroes serving on the front lines, on behalf of every patient and client who has turned to us for help and treatment this year, Thank you for your generosity, for starting the morning with us, and best wishes for a safe, healthy, and happy holiday season and new year. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Maude, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a privilege, Vitka. Thank you all. Thank you. You're all wonderful. Thank you.